All right, sports fans, how's everybody out there doing? William Martin coming at you one more time here on YouTube with another edition of the 300 Pounds of Sports Knowledge Podcast. Now, after the New York Knicks came out of nowhere to finish uh, fourth in the Eastern Conference last season, things are drastically different for the Knickerbockers this time around. The Knicks entered play today with a record of 23 and 27, which is good enough for 12th in the Eastern Conference. And, you know, there are a lot of different reasons to uh, talk about the Knicks' struggles uh, this year. One thing for me uh, that sticks out right away is forward Julius Randle. Now, we saw Julius Randle have a career year for the Knicks last year as he averaged more than 24 points per game. He made his first appearance in the All-Star game, and it was well-deserved. Uh, but this year, Julius Randle's numbers are down. And, you know, he went from averaging more than 24 points per game last season to just 18 and a half this season. And I say just, just due to the fact um, of what he was able to do last season. This time around, and I've said it before, and I will say it again, it's a situation with Julius Randle where he simply got exposed uh, last year in the playoffs, and he has not been able to recover from that. I'm here with my tag team partner, Cal Wonder God, who is uh, dressed to the nines. The only things he's missing is uh, his Kango. Because, listen, if I, if, I, if I was studying out like you, that's what I'd be wearing. I, I'd be wearing a Kango. Uh, but nonetheless, you How know, you doing, William? What's up, brother? I, I, I'm good in yourself, man. Listen, just talking hey. about uh, these New York Knicks. And okay. in my mind, I said it then and I will continue to say it. The Knicks overachieved last year. Okay. I, you know what? I was going to actually ask you that, mm -hmm. but uh, roll with it and I'll, I'll give you some analysis. Definitely right. roll with it. And, you know, for me, because I'm talking about Julius Randle. And for me, the biggest thing with Julius Randle had a career year last season. You can't take that away from him. But he, like this Knicks squad, overachieved. And I think that all parties involved are paying for that uh, now. I thought it was a mistake for the Knicks to give Julius Randle the type of money that they did. Because to me, and this is no offense, he's a guy, but he's not the guy. And there's a big difference on that. And I say that from the right. standpoint that Julius Randle does not have the type of offensive game where he can put a team on his back uh, consistently night in and night out. And we saw that last year in the postseason versus the Atlanta Hawks. Absolutely. And for, and for me, you know, Julius Randle focuses too much on the perimeter game. He's not a perimeter scorer. Julius Randle is at his best when he's playing close to the basket. And also, I really feel that Julius Randle could benefit from playing alongside, you know, a quality point guard that's going to set him up. And on top of that, a big that he can play off of. But when, you're talking, but when you're talking about you want Julius Randle to go out there and be your guy, that to me is a recipe for disaster. And I think the Knicks are paying for it right now. All right. Well, what I want to do, I came a little bit late to the cast. Please excuse me, brother. Um, I actually was shooting a commercial a little while ago. It went well. And while I was shooting a commercial, I was sitting here thinking about the 2021 Knicks. And I'm going to run down a little bit of uh, their roster because I think, you know, people, you know, you said that they overachieved. I believe they did to an extent, but I really think they beat who was in front of them, you know, to, to be honest with you. But what a, this is the roster they had in particular. They, they finished 41 and 31, fourth in the East. Uh, they lost to the Hawks four to one in the first round. And basically part of the reason why they lost last year was because they were tired. Tom Thibodeau, Thibodeau, he found a group of players that could play together and play against anybody and keep their foot on the gas. I think that was very, very important. These are young players. I believe that they um, their youth showed more than anything. But towards the end of the year, you know, Tom Tibbs, he got uh, the most out of them, but they were tired. But their roster was extremely, extremely flawed. And this is what a lot of Nick fans and a lot of people don't understand. Yes, I am not a Nick fan. Absolutely not. But one thing I do know is the game of basketball and the way uh, NBA uh, rosters are constructed, this was a mismatch made in hell. 
because what they did was they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guards on that roster at some point this year. Let me name the talent. R.J. Bennett, Alec Burks, Jared Harper, a guy I can't name. I can't even name this. I can't pronounce this guy's name. Frank N., Alfred Payton, Theo Pinson, Emmanuel Quickly, Austin Rivers, Derek Rose, and Dennis Smith Jr. You are not going to go far with that many guards. They had three centers, Todd Gibson, Noel Lawrence, Noel, Noel, Noel uh, Noville Pell, and Mitchell Robinson. They had four, actually. And they had four was Obi Toppin, uh, Iona Brazels, Kevin Knox, and Julius Randle. And like you said, Julius Randle, he had, a, he had a career year last year because it was actually a contract year. Now, if you look back at Julius Randle and from what he did from the year before when he was with the Knicks, his years except last year, pretty much identical, 19, 20 points a game, 10, 12 boards a game. The numbers are identical. He just, you know, was more the offense. He carried more of the offensive load last year, but but basically having, you know, the, you know, and then also with in the guard play who I didn't name, yeah, I did name Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose played big last year, and he was able to take a lot of stress off of Julius Randle because Derrick Rose was able to penetrate, he was able to score, he had some threes, he put some guys, set some guys up. There was a little bit more continuity with that squad. You know, but to me, they did overachieve. I'm going to agree with you on that. But I think they beat who was in front of them because if you look at it, Philadelphia finished, I think, 49 and 23 last year in the number one spot. So the number one spot was, uh, it, was, it, was it was the Sixers. I think it was the Nets and then it was Milwaukee. So you go one, two, three, and you see what it is. You look back at the top of it this year, those three teams are not at the top of the list this year. You know, Miami Heat is leading the league right now, then behind Miami are the Chicago Bulls, a team that wasn't in the playoffs last year. Meanwhile, this year's Knicks, with another, again, a flawed roster set up by Leon Rose, are in 12th place. And let me get it straight so I know what I'm talking about here. They are in 12th place, and they are, mm, what's that record? Give me one second, 23 and 27. And guess what? The Hawks, who they play, is in 11th place. So that goes to show you that most of the rosters in the East and, and throughout uh, the Eastern Conference got better. You look at Charlotte, they got better. The Knicks never got better. They didn't sign anybody other than Evan Fournier, if I'm correct, and Kimball Walker, who is basically a poor man's Derrick Rose at this point in his career. They're the same identical player. Derrick Rose and Kimball Walker, they're the same player. They got identical stats through their career, and basically you're getting the same player. So the Knicks never really made I think they got Cam Reddish. They didn't make any moves. They didn't do anything. So if if, if you overachieved last year, and this year you got a bit like a, a good part of the same roster, it's no way you're gonna win. It's no way. Yeah, I mean, I like listen, everything that you said, I totally agree with you on. I mean, the East has gotten a lot better. Chicago's up there. Cleveland, we didn't even talk That's about right. them. Cleveland was in third place. You That's know, right. Uh, the, you, you know, place, huh? you got the Washington Wizards in the mix, the Miami Heat, uh, the Brooklyn Nets. The, right. Mm -hmm. the, the Sixers are in sixth place right now. I mean, granted, they're just two yeah. and a half games back. But, you know, the East, the East has gotten better. And for my money, I never, you know, it was a feel good story, uh, you know, to see Kimber Walker, <laughs> you, you know, come to the Knicks. You know, he's a hometown guy. You know, Kimba, right. you know, shined at Madison Square Garden. Uh, when he yeah. was in, in college at UConn, he put the Huskies on his yeah, back, yeah. back and back in 2011. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, for me, my problem is Kimba's style of play doesn't fit what the Knicks do under Tom Thibodeau. Tom Thibodeau is a defensive minded coach. Kimba Walker has never been known as a defensive player at the NBA level. And then for me, Correct. you sign him and then not too long after you sign him, you basically send him to the bench. And the only reason he got back into, into the rotation was, you know, guys were out due to COVID. And then Kimba, you know, to his credit, Kimba kept himself ready to go. And we saw when Kimba got his second opportunity, you know, he showed, listen, I still got yeah. it. But for me, you know, to your point, you know, the Knicks are not a well-constructed team. I look at so many problems on this team. You know, you drafted Obi Toppin in the first round a couple of years ago, and now you don't play the kid. And to me, there's only one way to get better. You got to go out there and get your minutes. You got to go out there and get your reps. But that's a problem. Right. That's a problem with the Knicks for decades. And it doesn't matter who the head coach is, who the GM is. They, dra right. they draft these young guys. They give up on them right away. I really felt 
like Kevin Knox could have benefited if he went to another organization. And I mean, the Knicks gave up, gave up on him as soon as they got him. And then right after that, they went and drafted RJ Barrett. And I mean, to his credit, RJ Barrett is, you know, showing, you know, signs of life. Like, you know what, he's going to be something. I mean, he's the second leading scorer on the Knicks this year. Uh, but nonetheless, right. you know, this team, they just give up on their young guys too easy. And I look at it. I mean, honestly, the big thing for me, Tibbs, he runs his guys into the ground. But at the end of the day, you know, you're hearing rumors that the Knicks were looking to shop Julius Randle. And, you know, Julius Randle is having problems with the media this year. Uh, you know, he's having problems with fans. And again, like I said before, and I said it in a previous podcast, listen, when you get paid the type of money that Julius Randle got paid by the Knicks, right. you, you have to step up. You have to be a leader on and off the court. And that means dealing with the scrutiny from the fans, also dealing with the tough questions from the media. Because, again, in New York City, they're going to let you know how they right. feel you're playing, regardless of whether you want to hear it or not. And the media, they're going to go and out there and ask you those tough questions. So the bottom line is when you put your name on that dotted line, you got to deal with it. I'm not saying that you should go out there and have people disrespect you and call you, you know, like disrespectful names. Don't get me wrong. But fans are going to criticize. Fans are going to boo. The media is going to ask you those tough questions when you're not winning. And the thing is, to me, you know, the Knicks right now are on a fool's errand. And I say that because they over they overachieved last year. And they sold right. the fans in New York City a bill of goods because Nick fans are so desperate to see their team get back into contention, get back to making a potential championship run that, you know what, they'll go out there and, uh, you know, and, uh, and take on the pixie dust. And that's what they did after last season. This season, in my mind, is a reality check for them. Uh, they're in 12th place right now. And honestly, even if – the Knicks were to get into the play-in tournament, which I think is a joke. Anyway, that's a whole nother topic for another day. But nonetheless, what right. damage What damage can we really expect them to do? None. I don't even think they're going to make the playoffs. Uh, the first person I have an issue with, other than Sims, is his assistant coaches. Because when you're developing talent and you're developing players, it's really up to those assistant coaches to take the time out and to work with these kids and show them how to be professionals. As you said earlier about Kevin Knox, bringing it back about Kevin Knox, you know, they gave up on him. And I think the problem was he came out, he was about 19 years old. He only played one year in, of college basketball. I think he needed more time to develop to see what the kid could do. And um, they kind of pushed him out there and hoped he would be the face of, of the New York Knicks. But in actuality, what they did was they worked on it. They worked with him on the wrong skills instead of teaching him about going to the basket and, and his, using his leaping ability, which was his strength, they turned him into a three-point shooter. And I'll tell you, out of those 72 games last year, I might have watched about 65 Nick games on a do or dare. So I watched the games. And they tried to turn this kid into a three-point shooter, and I think he shot less than 30%, or like right around 30%. That, those are horrible numbers. And he kept shooting and shooting and shooting. And I said, well, why they have this kid shooting are they trying to shop him? Are they going to trade him? Because if they was going to trade him, they should have traded him last year. That was my opinion. To get Cam Reddish back, I don't see how Cam Reddish makes the, makes the Knicks make the playoffs. I don't see the Knicks made no additions to this roster that put them in a position to come out of 12th place. So damage being done, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see anything here happening. I mean, I'm looking at their guard play. They got Kemba Walker, Derrick Rose is out. Uh, with the knee injury, I believe, right? Or something ankle, like that. Ankle, ankle. Ankle injury, right. You got Alec Burks, you got Quentin Grimes, Miles McRod, Iman Quickly, who's quickly fell out of favor going back to the end of last year. His minutes went down. Yeah. You know, and going into the playoffs, his minutes went down. And at the beginning of the year, he was a spark plug that kind of turned the Knicks around when they were 15 and 16 at, you know, some point during the time of last year. And they rode this kid out and he played well. And then, you know, once... Uh, towards the end of the season came, his numbers went down. Same thing with Obi Toppin. Obi Toppin, they tried to make him turn him this year into a three-point shooter. Obi Toppin is not a three-point shooter. He's too big to be, I don't think his game is suited that way. He needs to learn how to handle the ball in the paint and go to the basket. Like the Knicks don't work on their, on their player development with their players. They don't, they don't basically use their strengths. You know, and I'm sitting here, they gave Julius Randle no help. RJ Barrett, 
the jury, I'm still, the jury's still out on him. They turned him into a small forward, but what you're losing there is rebounding and rim protection. He offers you no defense. He can't guard his way out of a paper bag. You know, and you still got Todd Gibson, which I know you need, you need uh, uh, veterans on the team, but at this point in time, with all these veterans that are out here that need jobs and should have had jobs, you need a veteran that's going to help produce. Uh, Todd Gibson is, is just standing there. I look at the Mitchell kid uh, and New Orleans Noel. They're not part of the Knicks offense. Your center is just there to rim protect when the ball is swung. And, and, and you know, they might be able to catch them on a pick and roll for a dunk every now and then. All their baskets are dunks. You don't see any type of development skill-wise around the paint, you know, any kind of jump shooting. They're just standing around, bro. And, and I'm going to tell you something. These centers in the East, you look at some of these centers in the East, they're the focal parts of their teams. So if, if, if you can't stop these guys, you're in trouble. The Knicks, I don't see them doing anything. I see the Knicks. The Knicks, they're going to have a fiery death, and I'm going to blame Spike Lee. Well, I mean, listen, I mean, you look at the Hawks, and the Hawks are starting to get it going. Um, they've won their last six games. I think I think Atlanta's going to sneak in. Uh, Toronto, you know, Toronto is a great run organization. And they, they, unlike the Knicks, they focus on player development. So, right. you know, that's why the Raptors are in the mix because you look at everything that the Raptors have lost in recent years from that championship team. Oh, yeah, they went Kyle, down to two. Right, yep. Kyle, right, Kyle Lowry, he's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's with the Heat. Kawhi Leonard, he's with the Clippers. Granted, he's sitting out. And then, of course, DeMar Rose, De, DeRozan, a guy who got traded uh, for right. Kawhi Leonard, you know, he's doing his thing with the Bulls he's right now. He's doing his thing with Chicago, that's right. right. He's, he's right. getting up. That's right. right, you know, and I mean, you still have, you know, Boston in the mix of a postseason spot, uh, the Sixers, the Nets. So the Knicks are probably going to be the only team from that division that does not make the playoffs. Uh, that's how that's how much that the Eastern Conference has changed. And honestly, I don't feel bad for the Knicks because they have Maybe. nobody, they, they don't have anybody to blame for themselves. Like I said, you know, last year. I would blame Leon Rose because, first of all, he's a player agent. He's not Rob Palenka. Rob mm -hmm. Palenka played with the Fab Five. Let's right. get this straight. Right. You understand what I'm saying? He was an actual basketball player. Leon Rose is a player agent. That's what he was. I don't see how he makes your organization better. You know, he might know some players, but if he knew some players that could play, where are they? Why are they not in Nick uniforms? I don't see basketball operation-wise where – Leon Rose fits in. So I'm going to blame James Dolan, Leon Rose, and I think Tom Thibodeau is, he, he doesn't fit the New York attitude. He doesn't fit the New York attitude. And I think when I look at him, um, I say to myself, it's something wrong here. Something doesn't look right. Listen, I think, I think Tibbs, men, mentality-wise, I think Tibbs is a good fit for the Knicks because, you know, he was an assistant there yeah, the for Pat, a long time. Yeah. Right, right during you know, the Pat, during yeah. the Pat Riley year, so he understands right. that fact. Um, mm -hmm. but the problem, but the problem is, you know, Tibbs, you know, he runs his guys into the ground, and there you, know, you, there you have it. Yeah. And you know, he's trying to make the adjustment to the current NBA game, where which is focusing on a lot of perimeter shooting, but the Knicks don't have the personnel to do it. And I think this is a problem that a lot of teams have. I think the Knicks need to focus on the strengths of their current players as you opposed to, That's right. you know, as opposed to trying to get them to do something that they can't do. If they had Julius Randle consistently play co closer to the basket, you know, they had RJ Barrett, you know, getting to the basket. If they had allowed Kevin, defense too, man, they right. were a good defensive team right. last year. Right. You know, if they had allowed Kevin Knox to develop, if they, you know, basically did not give up on Obi Toppin, like how they've done it, you know, maybe the Knicks are in right. a different spot. You know, but at the end of the day, I'm like you. I think when the regular season ends, I think the Knicks are on the outside looking in. I, I don't, like I said, you basically reiterated pretty much what I said a little bit earlier. I just said it in a different way. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this on record again. I'm going to blame James Dolan, Leon Rose, and I'm going to blame Tibbs. Okay, Tibbs has had too many good players in too many situations as a coach and was ran out of all of those places because of something he did is something he did to me. He doesn't fit the, the, you know, the New York style mentality of basketball, which is a little bit more free willing than what he's doing. He doesn't make adjustments in game. I saw no. this all last year. You, if you got a guy that's hot 
and this guy got about 35 points. Why don't you double or triple team and take the ball out this man's hand instead of continuing to go one-on-one -on -one where nobody on your team can guard this guy because you're not playing defense. That's what's that's what we're seeing now. All right. He won't he won't switch his defensive tactics and got away with it last year because the Knicks were rolling. They were scoring more and they were uh as far as their defense last year, they were better on help defense and sliding their feet. They were, you know, they weren't good one-on-one -on -one defenders, none of them. But what they did, what they made up for it was by spacing. And this goes back to coaching. So I couldn't, you know, I couldn't understand why they're having that problem this year because all of those kids that play during the course of the games, primarily most of them are young. So you don't have an excuse for your energy level unless you're injured and there's something we don't know. Thibodeau doesn't have an excuse for, for refusing to stop going one-on-one. -on -one because you don't have the, the defenders that even, the, the, the defenders were even better last year. I didn't like Alfred Payton, Payton, but he was good in spacing defensively last year. And he was a go-to staple on offense. Like I said, I hated his game, but he was, he was stable on both sides of the ball. He wouldn't give you a hundred points, but he would do what he could. And his spacing was good. And the guys kind of believed in him and what he was doing. I think they're also missing Derrick Rose. I think that plays a big part into it too. Big time, because big time, Rose, big time. His leadership and him being able to calm the players down and get them in, you know, get them into, you know, be involved into what, how he's trying to run the offense and by him just taking over and then showing them how to do it sometime instead of standing there looking for somebody else to do it or just taking that three-point shot. You know, you go to the basket. Julius Randle, I'm going to give him a little bit of the blame, but that blame goes to all the, the whole team because he's not the only guy playing. Right. I had to watch uh, uh, Evan Fortier. I think he won, just got hit like three buzzer beaters or something like that this year. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be in that predicament for him to have to keep bailing you out. And to me, he's a bench player at heart. That's my opinion. He's a bench player. Like I said, Julius Randle, the game is mental. Um, the Knicks are lost. They're lost. Yeah, man. I mean, I just don't see it happening for the Knicks this year. I know that you know, some Nick fans might call me a hater or whatever like that. I just, you know, find myself to be, you know, more realistic to it. And I mean, they, they overachieved last year. And because of that, I think the expectations coming into the season were too high. Uh, but with that said, you know what, they have a long road ahead of them if they think or if they intend rather to make the postseason this spring. Uh, so that's going to wrap it up for this yes, edition sir. of the 300 Pounds of Sports Knowledge podcast. As always, I want to thank Cal Wonder God for chiming in. Uh, Salute, Cal, thank you, Cal, is Cal, is there any any uh, thing that you want to plug uh, before we turn it off for the night, man? Um, I just want to say that the Knicks will die hard. Okay. All right. All right. Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> fair. Fair enough. And um and and uh, always for me, you can check me out on uh, Twitter at three hundred pounds of sports. And like I always say, if you follow me, it'll be my pleasure to follow you right back. There's also the sports discussion group on Facebook at the Sports Depot 365. You can check it out, drop a line, and be a part of one of the better sports debating sites going on social media. As always, if you like what you heard tonight, please feel free to hit the like button as well as subscribe to this channel. So for Cal Wonder God, this is yes, William sir. Martin signing off, saying take care and have yourselves a wonderful day.